Hey guys, I'm your host, David Powell, and you're listening to Curiously Veg Radio. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 41 of Curiously Veg Radio. And if you're uh, new, maybe returning, and you just need a little bit of a reminder that Curiously Veg is a movement which will open a dialogue between vegan, vegetarian, plant-based, and non-plant-based people alike, where we educate, not intimidate. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love adding the effect in there. It's This is for me. It's just a little something for me. Uh, <laughs> if uh, you'd like to be a guest on the show, much like we had a guest on for this episode, get to that in a moment. Or just be a guest host. Maybe you have to come on and maybe you can be a permanent host. Maybe you always wanted to help host a podcast. We'd love to have someone on, someone to go back and forth with. Uh, you can do so by going to our website, CuriouslyVegRadio.com, clicking contact at the top, fill out the form, let me know, hey, I'd love to be on the show. Let me know if you'd like to be on for a few episodes or just hey, you'd like to try it out, see if you like it, see if you want to be a regular. Uh, you From our website, again, CuriouslyVegRadio.com, you can also find our social, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's primarily where I'm posting now. Uh, you can go on there, click the little links, give us a like or a follow. Keep up to date on all the happenings, all the links I share, things like that, to like vegan news and uh, different different little posts, things like that, to kind of keep up to date what's going on in the vegan world, being on the vegan hap haps. Um, and of course, uh, please, re- please subscribe on whatever podcatcher you prefer to use, whether it's Stitcher or... Pocket Casts, which is what I use, or even the iTunes uh, iTunes app on your iPhone. Hit that subscribe button. Keep up to date so you know when things are coming in. You're automatically notified. You can hit that play button and get the episode downloaded download to your ear holes immediately. And um, rate us. Uh, give us a star heart. Anything you can, whatever your app offers. Definitely give us a rating on iTunes. A rating lets me know how I'm doing. And you also you can contact me. Go to our website and contact me directly. Know how I'm doing. But rating helps people find us. And you know, there's 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 a few vegan plant based style podcasts out there. They don't post as often as we do. Some some of them don't. So let me know. Hey, keep it up. And if I can do anything better, please let me know. I've had a few emails in the past that have said, Hey, uh, we like what you're doing, but we didn't like when you said this, or I didn't really like this, or if we could do more of this. That'd be great. Hopefully, you've noticed. You know, one of the things was. Uh, someone had noted that uh, they don't really like all the banter at the beginning and all the lead-in. Cut a lot of that out. Cut a lot of the ad stuff out and a lot of the lead-in stuff. So definitely subscribe, rate me, contact me, let me know how we're doing. So today, like I said, interview episode. I love these. Opportunity for you to hear more than one voice. I'm sure you absolutely love hearing me just kind of blather at you for the <laughs> for, for half an hour to an hour at a time in these. And uh, today... Um, we have on Naomi Green. Naomi, it was fantastic. I hope you're listening to the episode. It was fantastic having you on. Uh, Naomi, um, to give you kind of a background background of Naomi Green, she is a certified vegan lifestyle coach and educator who is also certified in plant-based nutrition from the E. Cornell T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. Uh, Naomi specializes in helping people go whole food vegan and get serious health benefits fast. She has been coaching private clients, and groups both remotely and locally, and running free online Facebook support group for those going vegan and presenting whole food vegan cooking workshops, cooking parties, and corporate wellness program events around the Tampa Bay area since recovering from breast cancer treatment in 2014, and she credits both yoga and going vegan with her health, healing, and happiness. And, you know, that, that's, that's really the main focus on the, uh, our discussion is, uh, you know, her cancer recovery. How her um, her getting cancer recovery and treatment everything with that led to her going plant based and adopting a whole food plant based diet. We also go a bit into what that means whole food plant based diet and where a lot of vegans fall short and how you can do better. I want to have her back on. Uh, her and I have already talked about this, so Naomi, let's uh, chat and kind of figure out when those dates are going to happen. To uh, have you back on, have her back on, talk about what actually. You know, go dig deeper into the whole foods, plant-based, even I, you know, kind of like maybe get sort of those pieces that I'm probably doing wrong that I could do better. And I admit on the episode that I could be doing better on the whole foods, plant-based diet, as opposed to eating a lot of the processed stuff. Uh, you know, it, I don't I don't want to hold it too long, but uh, definitely uh, go to her website, goingveganforhealth.com, and check out her Facebook page, Going Vegan for Health. Uh, it, 
She has uh, videos on there, uh, and there's like a great community around it. If you're maybe you're looking to go plant based for you know to to battling your you know obesity um, or type two diabetes, anything anything like that, looking to make that really that leap and to really get healthy, really to take control, take charge of your own health, take charge of your own really your own mortality, your own life by making that switch. Uh, Naomi is definitely a person to go to. Absolutely brilliant, a pleasure to speak with, and I'm sure you'll you'll, you'll hear in our conversation. Uh, again, goingveganforhealth.com, Going Vegan for Health Facebook page. Go like, go uh, go sign up, you know, connect with her. She can definitely help you, uh, you know, achieve the next step in, in, your, in your next vegan step, as well as harness 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 foods and uh, plant foods to actually help heal your body and put you into a better physical state. And get away from all of you know the, the the illnesses you have, trying to back off away from those and preventing a lot of those that uh, that could come your way by not doing so. And as promised, here's Naomi Green. Bye, guys. Cool, guys. I'm watching all the little on my computer, my program. I'm watching all the little things move around, so I'm making sure. <laughs> I'm Good. All right. So you. I'm all set. It's nice to meet you. Thanks so you much too. for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for, thanks for being on. It. Uh, you reached out and I was like, I, I, you kind of sent me your uh, some ideas. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna pull myself up. Yeah. So, and uh, you reached out to me a lot of topics. One of those was uh, was 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 was, uh, was uh, cancer related. And uh, you're yeah. you are a um, a uh, you're a plant based health coach and a cancer survivor. Yeah, I'm a cancer survivor, but I got the cancer before I went vegan. Okay. Did do you um did you did did getting cancer like kind of kind of give you the push to go that direction or was it was it yes well after? yes I'll, I'll tell you the whole story you want to hear the whole story absolutely all right so um back in 2014 I felt a lump in my breast and you know I I didn't think anything of it because women can have lumps and when I was younger I had a fibroid cyst. So I didn't think much of it, but, you know, I went to the doctor, I got the mammogram and the ultrasound and I was only 47. So, um, and this was three and a half years ago. It's pretty recent. So, um, so I wasn't getting regular mammograms at that point yet. Like, I think they started 45 and there I was at 47. I wasn't getting them every year. There wasn't anything like that happening. So, um, I went to the doctor, I got the mammogram, I got the ultrasound, I had the biopsy, and the doctor called me up and she said, you have invasive ductal carcinoma stage two. And I said, what? And she said, you have invasive ductal carcinoma stage two. And I said, what are you saying? I don't know the words. And she said, you have breast cancer, stage two. So um, I was shocked because like most of us, before we go vegan, we don't think that we're eating anything wrong. We don't know. We don't know about the plight of the animals. We don't know what it does to the earth. And we don't know what it's doing to our bodies. So I thought I was healthy. I jogged with my dogs. I worked out. I shopped at Whole Foods and ate organic foods. Um, I knew about kale and goji berries. <laughs> um, I really thought I was doing a good job. So um I couldn't understand how I could have gotten cancer in the first place. Um, and, they, and they did tests on me and they found out that it was, I did not have the genetic markers for it or anything else. I also didn't have any of the risk factors. So um, I, I, they, I, they said I had to remove my breasts. I had to do chemotherapy. I had to do radiation because they found cancer in the lymph nodes. It was already invasive. It spread. So, um, I did everything they said because I didn't know any better and they sort of make you rush into it. It's, it's pretty scary. So, yeah. So, um, so when I was all done a year later, like, seriously, wow. like 10 months later of all that treatment, I was bald. I was scared. I was scarred. Um, and they ring this stupid bell and they're like, yay, you're done. But come back every three months and we'll test you and let you know when the cancer comes back. So I was like, what do you mean the cancer comes back? And um, 
So I, I was so scared because if I got cancer before, when I thought I was doing a good job with my health and my nutrition and my exercise, then how was I going to keep it from coming back? If it already came when I thought I was doing a good job, obviously I didn't know something and I didn't know what I didn't know. So, um, I decided to ask my oncologist because I knew about the kale and superfoods and I had heard about, you know, all of that antioxidants. Yeah. Um, yeah. I decided to ask my oncologist. So I said to her, what should I eat to keep the cancer away? Or what should I not eat to keep the cancer away? Tell me what to do. I think it's about the food. And she said to me, it doesn't matter what you eat. She said, I want you to take these pills and it doesn't matter what you eat. And I was like, come on, I'm really asking you. I'm the kind of patient that would do whatever you said. If there was something I shouldn't eat or should eat, I will do it. And she said, stop it. It doesn't matter what you eat. And she got kind of mad at me. Yeah. And, um, and I thought about it and I thought about it and I realized that she really believed that because they serve cupcakes and cheese crackers and stuff like that in the chemo room where everybody's <laughs> sick and dying of cancer. So, um, uh. yeah, so I, I just didn't know what to do. So I went home and I started Googling. I was consulting Dr. Google. You know how we do that. <laughs> and, um... I was Googling cancer and nutrition, can food and cancer, and I came across the documentary Forks Over Knives. Have you seen that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That, that was actually the, the, the last documentary I saw before I made my switch. Great. So that's what happened to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was watching that documentary. I was bald and scared and very upset from the appointment with the oncologist. And I'm watching and watching, and I see, you know, I hear Dr. T. Colin Campbell, and he's talking about his research on animal proteins. And then all of a sudden, he says, we found that eating animal protein turns cancer cells on, and not eating animal protein turns cancer cells off. And I thought, that's it. That's the ticket for me. That's something, something I can do, right? Some kind of power, you know. And then um, I, I kept listening and the rest of the documentary talks about how not only the animal proteins but the saturated fat and the cholesterol also increases cancer risks and is also the main cause of diabetes and heart disease mm -hmm. and obesity and that they're all related all four things are related and you can reverse and control and prevent them all through a whole food plant-based diet right so i ran into the kitchen and threw out everything and I went whole food vegan immediately. So, um, uh, and I, that's, and then I decided I had to spread this message and I had to tell everybody that was walking around obese and that was raw and cancer patients like me and people struggling with diabetes and high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high glucose. None of it is necessary. You can fix it by fixing what's on your plate. So, um, so I went and got, you know, trained to be a certified vegan lifestyle coach and educator. And I also took the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies plant-based nutrition certificate. So, um, so that's how that happened. <laughs> well, I, I tell people all the time, there's nothing, there's nothing in, in animal-based foods that, foods in quotes, that you need. You don't need dietary cholesterol. You don't need added saturated fats from animal products and th things in your diet. I have actually wearing a shirt that says, that says, you, says you, can, you, can, you can live without cheese. Oh, heck yes. That's, that's, you, sh you, you will live without cheese yeah, or <laughs> what the shirt should say. Right. You'll live a lot happier, a lot longer, and a lot healthier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, even so, that, well, even that study yeah. that uh, I was on Folks Over Knives, it was actually done mostly <laughs> with casein. It was done with casein, but if you kept, if you keep listening, Dr. Campbell explains that they did it with many different animal proteins. Oh, sure. They replicated the study with many different proteins, many different labs, many different researchers, and many different protocols. And even the, the interesting thing was the time lapse protocol where they raised and lowered the protein every 21 days, and they could turn on and turn off the cancer cells every 21 yeah. days, depending on the threshold of protein in the diet. That is incredible. It's a, it's we, a, yeah. Yeah. So what did, when you, did you go back to your oncologist or did you change your diet and, and talk with them? 
Um, well, of course, at that time, I became an evangelist, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to get everybody to watch Forks Over Knives, and many people did, but the oncologist never much... Uh, she, she continued to say, it doesn't matter what you eat. And, and I understand that she sees people dying of cancer every day, fat, thin, no matter what they eat, they could be plant-based, not, you know, and so from her point of view, she, she just believes in the pharmaceutical approach, the allopathic approach, and that, that's all. So she didn't care. There's also another um, book that also changed my life at exactly that same time as the Forks Over Knives thing happened. And I had already gone vegan. And it's a, it's a book called Radical Remission. Have you seen this book? I have not. So this is a book by um, a PhD named Kelly Turner. And she came across the 1,000 studies that exist in the medical literature that are medically documented where a terminal cancer patient was told, you have stage four cancer, set your affairs in order, there's nothing more we can do for you. And then those same patients that were told to go home and die came back and their tumors had regressed or disappeared entirely, and they lived. So she was looking to find out who had studied these cases. Had anybody looked into them to see if you know, they all did a similar thing, or if there's something you could learn from those cases. And nobody had ever looked into them or studied them. So she, she got them all, she interviewed all the people, and she tested all the cases against 75 different factors that it could possibly be. And she came across nine common factors of 100 of the cases where they all lived. So, and we're still alive to talk about it. Right. So, um, so the book is called The Nine Factors That Make a Difference, and one of them was radically changing your diet. So when I read that, I was like, okay, here's another set of evidence for, for this change. And the other, the other factors um, <laughs> are, are really important for not only reducing cancer risk, as she pointed out. And what she did is she interviewed each person as to how, how they um, – incorporated this factor into their life. Then she reviewed the medical evidence to see if there's medical evidence to support this factor reducing cancer risk. And then she gave you ideas on how to, how to incorporate it into your own life. Okay. So it was really fantastic. So, so these nine factors, not only do they reduce cancer risk, but they're also like the recipe for a happy, fulfilled life. Right. So, so that um, I, I was like, I could do these nine things. They don't cost money. They're pretty um, basic things, but they were things that I was not doing. What do, so, what, what, do, do you recall, recall what the, the nine factors were? I, I recall many of them. <laughs> now they're just a part of my life. <laughs> so one of them was radically changing your diet. Right. Another one was following your intuition. So I had an intuition that I was not going to take those pills anymore that the doctor said I had to take for the next 10 years, all breast cancer patients, survivors, have to take this thing called tamoxifen or other aromatase inhibitors to reduce estrogen in the bloodstream if they had hormone-positive tumors, which I did, which most do. So they, they have women take this, but it's a horrible pill because what's a woman without her estrogen? Right. She is in pain. She is depressed. She is dry as a bone. <laughs> It's bad. It's a terrible, terrible drug. So I had an intuition that I was just not going to take that pill. So, um, and I decided to get more in tune with following my intuition and my intuition about the food also turned out, out to be correct. So whenever patients of any illness or anybody, you, you really have to, you really should be more in tune with your intuition. That was one of them. Another one was practicing mindfulness. And, and being in the present. So um, it just so happened that when I was recovering from the cancer treatment, my daughter was home from college and she was like, hey, mom, you want to go to yoga with me? And I was like, well, I never did yoga, but okay. So we went and I learned how to focus on my breath and what was happening on my mat right there. Right. And that helped me stop being afraid because right before that, 
all that was in my head was afraid, 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 cancer, 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 I'm going to die. It's coming back. It's coming back. And that was all I had in my head, literally, until I learned how to stop that chatter. And that has been an immense weight off me. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how, how kind of clear in your head that way you can kind of open yourself up to actually find finding answers to a degree. I mean, even if you're yeah. studying or learning something, you know, kind of like when I'm doing like development or learning some sort of new code, stepping out and kind of clearing my head and going outside for a walk helps me kind yes. of like kind of focus and bring that information I'm trying to learn into my head or find solutions to problems that I would have more difficult finding later. Exactly. And, um, Another one of the factors was to encourage positive emotions. And another factor was reducing negative emotions so that if, if there was something um, about emotions, if you, there's, there's a theory, you know, because it's not medically proven, but there is a very strong correlation to negative emotions and stress and cancer development. And so if you have and very often a woman's can anybody's cancer is often precipitated by some kind of traumatic emotional event that happened recent in the recent prior, you know, time period right before the tumor was evident. So um, if there was something in your life that you hadn't dealt with that was, you know, um, responsible for negative emotions, whether it was on your part or your dealings with another person or some sort of a thing, then, um, then you had to deal with that thing. So I dealt with that thing. Right. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> and a another one of them was having a strong will to live. All the people had a strong will to live. I don't know if you've ever heard of people who just give up and die. Right. They do. That's what happens. If you give up, you, you literally die. None of them who give up live. So Right, because I mean, your 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 emotions, your mental state affect affect how you feel. I mean, either they've even had studies showing or if they had people who in the hospital with you know with an illness, where if you people didn't come visit them and and show them support, they actually would deteriorate. And the opposite was true. Yeah. People they showed support, and people would come and check on them. They actually got better. Just their simple mental emotional state actually affect your recovery in illness in general. That's that's a hundred percent true. So these were um. So, so one more factor was um, finding a holistic physician so that you can find herbs and supplements that can strengthen your immunity and strengthen your body that are personal to you. And um, everybody has genetic and personal quirks and deficiencies or whatever. And when you're a cancer survivor and you've been through treatment, you need to correct that because the treatment weakens your liver. Um, the adriamycin, which is the chemotherapy agent, and also the radiation weakens your heart. Um, and so, and then I also found out I had a genetic marker for homocysteine, which means I need higher levels of B12 than most vegans. I never would have known that. It's important to my heart. It was important to my healing, you know, and she said, People who go to investigate that have stronger immunity and a stronger body and recover faster, all of that. So um, th those are that's just like four or five of the factors. But all of the factors are pretty commonsensical, if you right. Absolutely, yeah, that, and that's a, and there, there's been study for study that shows a lot of those are effective, especially positive yeah. attitude, um, uh, you know, healthy diet. All this, it's it's again, like you said, it's common sense that you know those sort of things, putting those in your life, not only make you better for recovering illness, just make you, right. make you less susceptible to illnesses down the road. Now, um, and, and by the way, for all the nine factors, like I said before, she provided the medical evidence support for the factor. Right. So it wasn't just the people did it and it worked or it sounds good. No, there was medical evidence to support it. A lot of medical evidence. Oh yeah. So, um, so that book really changed my life. But here's the thing, and this is kind of what you what you said you wanted to talk about, which is that even though you're vegan, you can still get sick, you could still get cancer. So I'm not saying this is a cure for cancer. However, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, <laughs> he actually does say, you know, there's there's three main stages of cancer. 
One is initiation where the carcinogen or whatever caused it, you know, sets in. And the second stage is promotion where the cells divide and it starts growing. Mm -hmm. And the third stage is, is progression where it becomes an evident tumor. And at that point, it's a tumor and it has spread. So I got through all those stages. But he says that during the initiation stage, um, nutrition plays a giant role in whether or not that cancer cell, the one cell, the, the mutated gene, is even going to mutate or is, is going to, yeah, whether it's going to mutate at all. Right. And nutrition plays a giant role more than genetics, more than anything else, on whether the one mutated cell is going to be killed by the body or is it going to start to multiply. Right. And he says during initiation and promotion, that's where you are reversing. So during the initiation stage, you're preventing it through nutrition. And during the promotion stage, you are reversing it. And that even in the progression stage and at the very end, if you adopt a whole food, plant-based diet, no oil, you can turn, you can reverse it. You can stop that, that tumor from coming back. You can stop those cells from initiating and you could stop it. He literally says that now, um, people do die. Dr. McDougall, are you familiar with Dr. McDougall? Yes. He's one of the plant based nutrition experts for more than 30 years. And he has a special specialty um, of his research and his treatment practice is, is in breast cancer patients. And he has an, a webinar and, where people have asked him this question. You know, they'll say, well, I know a woman who followed a whole food plant based diet and she still died of breast cancer. And he said, well, then she didn't follow it. She was eating fat. She didn't follow it. That's all I'm telling you. She was heavier than she should be, and she didn't follow it. He he literally said it right like that. <laughs> so, um, well, there's a however. So I wanted to just say that um, I I'm not saying it's a cure for cancer, but I'm living this way because I believe that I'm doing as much as I can possibly do. That's based on medical evidence that I can do to stop a cancer recurrence from happening in me. And it can happen again. And if that happens, then at least during this time that I've, between the time that, it, that I first had it and it happens again, I will have been living a fulfilled and happy life. And I will not regret anything because I didn't cause it. You know what right. I mean? Like it happened, it happened. And, and in the meantime, I've been, helping people get healthier every day. I've been helping people turn their lives around, get off meds, spreading this message and talking about it. So it's, it's really the, the key to going vegan is also just the key to a fulfilled and happy life for so many reasons for the animals and for the planet, not only for my health and the health of everybody that I touch. Absolutely. There's, there, there's a study that was uh, done by uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Greger actually talks about. Yeah. I'm sure you know, Dr. I, I have his book, yes. I'm Not to Die, like sitting right here. Same uh, here. <laughs> and it talks about like he literally, they literally took blood of, a, of someone who was a non-vegan and someone who was, and they put cancer yeah. cells with it. And you could, yep. there was a night day difference where there's almost no cancer cell growth at all on the vegan side because your actual, the actual blood, your, the cells in your blood are actually attacking and preventing that from that spread. And to yeah. your point, and to your point, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's necessarily, it's also about setting yourself up to not actually become, be, get an illness. And yeah. so setting up, fortifying yourself with all the nutrients and the health and everything yes. you need. So if you, you know, no one, no one's, no one's at 0% risk. Everyone has some sort of risk. There's genetic markers think that that create some sort of risk. But actually, it's, it's getting as close as you as you can. Actually, the environment is where the carcinogens are. They're in our environment. Oh, for and sure. And they're in our food. And if you have the genetic... So the genetics is kind of like the gun. Right. Okay? And then the carcinogens get in there, and the nutrition is the trigger, pulls the trigger. Right. If you have the good nutrition, the trigger won't be pulled Generally speaking, that. this is what the plant-based experts say. Yeah. The carcinogen can, can get in there and stimulate the genetics, but the nutrition sets the stage and does not allow the trigger to be pulled. In the opposite way, the standard American diet pulls that trigger so fast. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's that, I, I watch people all the time. Like my dad has just had another stint and stuff put into his heart. And this mm-hmm. is going off cancer, but I, you know, I ask him all the time. It's like, are you ready to like to, to make die? that? Yeah, are you ready to die? You make are you, are you going to keep going through and getting yourself stuff up for heart further into heart disease and risking yourself of getting you know getting cancer, or are you ready to actually like listen to me for two seconds, read a book, and adjust yourself so you can stop the progression that you already have and prevent what's going to happen in the future. And unfortunately, Do- he's not quite there yet, but I think I think I'm wearing him down a little bit though. Doctor Esselstyn, like. It, for heart disease patients, yeah. What 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 Dr. Esselstyn shows in Forks Over Knives, I don't see how that could be ignored by any heart disease patient, right? It, yeah. it is it is proven. He showed the blockage, and then he showed the blockage gets less. Yeah. This is what the people did. I just for heart disease, it really is the cure because. The reason it's the cure is because you're reversing the cause. The cause was the food. Yeah. And so when you remove the cause, the cure happens. Yeah. That's- well, I, I, I always tell people that the, the, if, if something you eat makes you sick or leads yeah. to your illness, that's not food. That's a poison. Yes. Food, poison. Should, food should keep you healthy and, and heal you. And that's exactly, exactly what plants do. Even if you go to a doctor, doctors typically don't, take, don't, don't really take much classes in nutrition. Yeah. But if you go to a doctor and you're overweight or you're unhealthy, they will tell you, well, you need to change your diet. And even if they say you need to eat, you know, more fruits and vegetables, even if it's something generic, it's such yeah. a it's simple knowledge of if I'm not feeling good, I need to eat something that's that's comes comes from the earth. But like my oncologist <laughs> said, she doesn't think it's the food. It doesn't matter what you eat. Most people don't know that the food is the cause of the blockage in the heart. What do you, they think, oh, my parents had heart disease. I'm genetically, I'm just going to get it. I hear that from my that's hear what that diabetes, from parents. Yeah. That's what diabetes patients think. Yeah, I hear that from my parents. My mom says, well, you know, he's genetic. He just, well, that's the thing, and that's See? The thing, let's see, my mom will say, well, he's genetic. Well, I told, I, I, my mom is a little more open. She's a little under, listen, listen to me a little better. And yeah. I'll tell her, I was like, well, you know, do you think he's ready to start like eating tofu and bean sprouts, which is an inside joke between he and I. He and, I. Yeah. and she goes, well, you know, it's, it's you know, the doctor says it's genetic because you know, his, you know, his, uncles and all this had it and i want to go that's because they had the same diet they ate the yes. same thing they all died exactly. from the same thing and had the exact same heart problems because they all ate the same way right <laughs> i'm 35 nutrition- years old with no medication for a reason yeah the nutrition pulled the trigger yeah. on that genetic heart disease gene absolutely that's <laughs> how that works the whole gun thing totally explains that yeah um how but i want to I want to point out one thing, and that is about the difference between vegan and whole food plant-based diet. Right. So vegans who do not follow a whole food plant-based diet, that means they eat a lot of processed food like garden products and chow cheese and um, fake meats, tofurkey. And don't get me wrong. I know these things are delicious. I have had them all. <laughs> um so a lot of processed foods with giant ingredient lists, yep. which include neurotoxins, a lot of saturated fat, other fats, food chemicals, um, glutamates of all kinds, artificial colors, natural flavors, which we don't know what those always are. Right. <laughs> um, so um, those and, and vegans who are very who are overweight. If you're overweight and you're eating that processed food, your risk of of any of these diseases is higher based on obesity, diabetes, and heart disease all being related and cancer all being related. So whole food plant-based diet, meaning fruits, vegetables, grains, and beans, and and very low in those processed foods – is, is a way to um, reduce your risks of disease because there are a lot of really overweight vegans. And I have a special program for overweight vegans to help them because I hate seeing overweight vegans because not only you got to love the animals and the planet, but you got to love yourself too when, yeah. you, when you do this. It's just not free range on junk food. Right. And for, I, you, I, for yourself. I unfortunately am a little bit, a bit in that category. I tend to kind of, I, I, I do my best to stay whole food, plant based. 
Mm-hmm. But I, I have, I do our times. Like last night, we went to an Italian place and they, they make a vegan sausage and peppers. Yeah. So I had the light life um, sausage with peppers and that sort of stuff. So I, I, I admit I, I could, I could definitely do, do better. Well, sure. um, something I learned, which when I jogged with my dogs and, and all this stuff, um, I'm five foot six and I weighed about 170, 168 pounds mm-hmm. at the very lightest. That is almost obese for my height. Yeah. And I found that out by checking the CDC BMI chart. Right. And I was like, holy hell, I'm, I'm obese. I, and I thought of myself as a healthy person who knows what's up. No, I wasn't. I never took the time to look at the weight chart. I never figured it out. And since cancer treatment has been over, I've lost. I finished cancer treatment at 180 pounds. Wow. And I've lost 40 pounds on a whole food plant-based diet because I heard Dr. McDougall loud and clear Breast cancer patients need to be at the bottom of the weight chart for your height, not at the top of it, not over it, not in the middle of it, but towards the bottom. Right, because you're more to, at risk. To reduce, to reduce that risk of cancer recurrence because the fat causes inflammation in the body, which causes a whole cascade of negative events. Right. And that's, that's something that I believe is important to point out that – just because you're not eating animal foods doesn't mean that you can't get sick. Right. Did, and you re- I was like, did, did, so kind of going back, did you did you did you switch oncologists since she wasn't really supporting your your um your viewpoints, or, or or did you kind of keep going back for tests to prove to kind of prove your point to her? Honestly, <laughs> she does not notice how great I look or how much weight I've lost. She doesn't think that matters. Or she would say, hey, that's great. You've lost 40 pounds. You would think she would say something like that. She doesn't even notice, but she does. I do, I do, I'm required (laughs) to go for those blood tests every three months because I don't take that tamoxifen pill that she wants me to take. And what what does she say when you, when she, I'm I'm just, I'm sure she she knows you're not taking the pill. What does she say? Yeah. And, and Every time I go, she says, you are not on tamoxifen, right? And I say, no. And she says, well, you are doing great. That's what she says. And doesn't She's even Asian. acknowledge. That's why she has that. She says, well, you are doing great. But she doesn't talk about it or ask how or why or anything like that. That's all she says. It, it, do you think it's just denial or is it she doesn't feel like she can say anything about it? Or what do you? She does not believe it. And I uh, have not given her any of my speeches about it. I tried, um, and not her, but the, the, the head oncologist there who, um, I work at this community garden and he goes to this community garden too. So one time I sort of cornered him and I tried to (laughs) ask him if we could, if I could hold workshops at the cancer center or if I could, um, supply them with that book, radical remission so that when they ring the bell and they are done with treatment, that they could give people this book. Right. Because I'm not, again, I'm not saying this book is a cure for cancer, but here's what else you can do, cancer survivor, to reduce your risk. Here's some help for what to do so that you don't leave this place crying. Um, And he said to me, no, we can't. He said that he read the book. And I said, well, what'd you think of the book? And he said, well, I thought it was very positive. And I'm like, it seemed like more than that to me. And he said, well, I said, well, why can't we supply this book to cancer survivors? And he said, we wouldn't want to give anybody the idea that there is a cure for cancer that is not what we have here. And I said, this is not a cure for cancer. This is what else somebody can do to improve their life and reduce cancer recurrence. I don't understand why you can't give this. And he said, we just can't. I, so right. that was the end of that conversation. Right. It's so like- I just stopped. It's 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 like there the may maybe no cure for for concussions, but you still wear a helmet. Yeah. At least you at least put the helmet on to make sure you're not you know you at least take take preventative measures to ensure you're less likely to actually get get the disease or the injury or the illness. And so because oh. of that attitude, um, cancer survivors are a very tough nut to crack. I don't work with a lot of cancer survivors. They do not seek out the information. They're told what to do, and they're not told about these other things. And so cancer survivors are this much of of what I do. I spend most of my 
my time helping obese people with diabetes and heart disease because those people can be helped so fast. Right. So fast. A whole food plant-based diet, that weight just funk, falls right off. Their blood pressure comes down. Cholesterol comes down in two weeks. And glucose starts regulating the A1C. If they have high A1C, it starts coming right down right. in like four to six weeks. And one woman that I worked with, she got off of injectable, 80 units of injectable insulin in six months. Wow. Shots. Never again. Doesn't have to take them. Have you had somebody? Now she's. What? I'm sorry. I was saying, have you had somebody come to you who is um, extremely um, um, skeptical but willing to try? And what, have you had somebody come to you like that? Or, or do people tend to so, come to you who are ready to go? My ideal client, I only work with people who have seen both documentaries, and by both, I mean Forks Over Knives and What the Health. Right. And they have also maybe read How Not to Die or any other book. Some of them read Dr. Furman's book or Dr. McDougall's book or Do The China Study, whatever. They've read something. They've watched the documentaries. They know, they think, and they know that this could work for them, but they don't know how. So they're asking me how. They're not asking me why. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah. They need help with the what, with the how. And if they're not at that level, I suggest to them to watch a documentary. I don't take anybody who's skeptical because then they're not committed. Right. Well, I think I think it also uh, lends itself to the positive attitude. One of the nine factors we talked about earlier is staying yeah. positive. Is if you if you're asked if you don't understand the why and you're skeptical, you're not going to have the positive outlook to actually aid in that that recovery either. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, the first session that I do with people, so I have like a program and it's like five steps. And this is, these are the five steps that if you want to be successful and you want those health benefits, like I just described to you, mm -hmm. blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose, plummeting, weight falling off, then you got to follow these five steps. And the first one is always mindset. And so they already know how it works. They know why they're ready to do it. And so we, we work on um, seeing what is their life going to be like once they have no more it, insulin injections and they can fit into size 10 or 8. And what's the shopping going to be like? And what kind of activities will they be able to do when they're no longer obese? And what kind of people will they be hanging out with? And what will it feel like to have overcome this kind of a health issue? We do a lot of mindset work like that. So somebody who's still skeptical is not ready. And so I don't work with people like that until they say, I want to do this. Here's money. Help me do this. That's, that's <laughs> it. Have, have you had, have you kind of had, a, have you had to turn, turn people away? Kind of like tell them like, come back to me when you're at this point or when you've watched these things, have you turned yes, people away for that reason? I actually have. Yeah. And, and then I've, I've also had people who, um, who have said that, who have been very, very sick and ill and have said that they can't afford it, but they afford lots of other things and they afford all those medications. Cause remember, it's not just one medication. They're on like five or six. It's very expensive. The doctor's appointments, the injectable insulin, all of those tests and living a sick life is, is very expensive. And so, um, mm. tend to those people, I, I just say, you know, keep learning keep coming to my free events. I'll say, you know, I'm holding a screen, a movie screening here, or I'm holding a potluck, come and taste the food. I'll just say that. Right. Well, I, I thought that's, yeah. if something's important to you, you, you tend to, you tend to find a way, you know, if, if, yeah. you, if you want to get up in the morning, make sure you have a healthy breakfast before you go off to work or school, anything like that. And you say, well, I don't have enough time in the morning. We'll get up five minutes earlier. If you really want to take People. control of your health and, 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 and your future and your everything, it's if it's important to you, you'll find the time. You'll find you find you'll exactly. you'll find the resources. You have even if you have to have friends and family kind of help you out and get you to that point. If you're important to you, you tend to find the time and the resources. That's exactly the truth. So somebody who really watched those documentaries and says says to themselves, "I wish that was me. I really want to do that. I can do that." Somebody right. who gets that thought in their head will make it happen. If you've ever read the success stories on the Forks Over Knives website, you know, you can see that a person who, who does it can do it. And so all right. of the events I hold, I very often bring real people that I've helped and even people that I haven't helped who have done it on their own that I know in my town who have reversed a serious, um, and some of them are like autoimmune, you know, they've, 
they've lessened their psoriasis flares and their rosacea disappeared and their in, um, irritable bowel syndrome disappeared and their right. allergies disappeared. Not, not only the, you know, diabetics and heart disease and people like that, but I'll bring these real people to come and tell their stories so that other people can learn that they can do it. You know, sometimes people don't really believe that they can do it. So, you know, I do everything I can to let people know that they can. And if right. they can, if they think they can, then they will find a way. Like Absolutely. you said, they will find the money. They will find the time. They will find the Instapot if they want it. They will find, <laughs> you know, whatever they want to do. People are right now in their lives, they are doing what they want to do. And when they think that something else is going to give them more pleasure and less pain, they will do that thing. Right. That's, I think that's a, lot of a time, Tony Robbins tip for you. <laughs> I think a lot of time, thank, thank you for that. I think it's, I think it's also, I think it's, it's important people that people have to understand that the thing will, I'm trying to put this. It's, I think sometimes it's a lack of understanding knowledge and or education, which we're reading and watching yeah. documentaries, things help. And that's even what the oncologist, I don't think, I think a part of that is, you know, she has a certain set of knowledge and doesn't hasn't further that understanding. So the lack of knowledge, not stupidity, but the lack yeah. of that knowledge prevents her from making that step to actually talking about diet and understanding that there are actually things you can do. Same people, same yeah. people who have, who are, who are, who are at cancer risk, cancer survivors, um, the heart disease, diabetes, they don't have the understanding of what they will do will solve the problem. They don't, they don't have the knowledge of that actually will, help them so they don't want to make that actual jump and that leap. They're still stuck in the, no, I just have to eat less red meat. No, you have to eat no meat. Yeah. There's that. You have well, to... I just need to eat less cheese. Right. Yeah. Right. Moderation no. does, does not work. Ugh. And, and also the other <laughs> misconception is that the food does not taste good. And that is why I hold cooking workshops, cooking classes and potlucks so that people can taste the food. Right. And, um, because, Pleasure power trumps willpower. And once you realize that the food is delicious, yeah. then you're ready to jump on. You're like, oh, well, I could eat this. And if I could eat five more things like this, then that's a whole week's worth. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have on my website a naturally vegan food cheat sheet, which lists 30 foods that are naturally vegan. So what does that mean? That's like minestrone soup. That's naturally vegan. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. Everybody knows what it is, right? It's not weird. No, no. I have some right? in the fridge, actually. <laughs> yeah. Lentil soup. Totally oh, normal. Soup. People know what it is. Beans and rice. People love that. Eat it all the time. They know what it is. So um, I want people to understand that they're already eating lots of vegan food and, and to um, figure out what those foods are that they already love and know. And you start with eating more of those things. What's the thing about it? I tell people say, well, it just seems so hard to do. And I think it's not. It's really think about yeah. what you like and just replace the animal part. Like if you love, if you like lasagna, there are plenty. Just take out, you just, you, you, you play, you place the cheese option, you place the meat option. Everything else is vegetables. So, so by, by, by focusing on the naturally vegan foods that never had meat and mm -hmm. don't have meat, then you don't have to address the meat. Exactly. That's yeah. why I do that. Right. You see the difference? I, you, I do. Yes. Those foods never had cheese added, never had meat added. They don't have it. So you don't like, where's the meat at? Where's the cheese? Ugh. No. Right. <laughs> well, that's, what, that's why I focus on, on that. I don't like to try to, you know, replace the meat or – because then they're in the same mindset of, of missing it. Right. Right. And, uh, and, and I think the main thing is, 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 is just, you know, uh, that's, I think that's the problem people are trying to make that transition is – they don't know how because they have that. They're so used to having that mindset yeah. of having that meat and cheese in there, and saying, "Well, you don't have to have that. You can if you you're having tacos. That's great. You can use black beans, pinto beans, refried beans. You can you yeah. can have the exact the same thing. You just take the part that is terrible for you and replace something that's actually very good for you, like rice and beans. Precisely Put that in your burrito. Precisely. Like I go to, I'll go yeah. to Chipotle because like you know when I leave work I'll go to Chipotle. Yeah. And they have yes. all these like. Meats and cheese options, and I literally get brown rice, black beans, corn, guacamole, and and lettuce. The tofu, the chorizo, oh, that's no. delicious. Oh, the, yeah. the uh, yeah, the sofrito. Like you want what, what, sofritos, you, yeah. Yeah, sofritos. Yeah, you, you want any meat? You want any meat? I'm like uh, tofu, sofritos. I'm like, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. I always had to tell them to so, pull from the back with the guac because they always get cheese yeah. in the front. I'm like, why do you put them next to each other? 
<laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But, um, you know, so um, so part, so part. the second thing that I do after we do mindset work with a client, oh, then yes. I'll do, we'll create a personalized menu together and we'll talk about all those naturally vegan foods and which ones do they love and know how to cook. We put those, so we make a list of breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, and snacks that are naturally vegan that they already know how to cook or want to learn how to cook. Because many women do want to learn to cook. Many women don't, but many women do. So they'll so we'll put one or two things on that they want to learn to cook. Um, but things that they love, and we don't put anything that they don't love. So if they say, I hate salads, I will not put that on their menu, and they just won't start with salads because they hate them. We don't put anything that they hate on that list. If they hate beans, then we don't put beans or we try different beans, you know. So this way they have this giant menu full of foods that they love and all they have to do is put that on the refrigerator and pick from the list. Just pick. That's all. Yeah. So, um, might- and that has been very successful way, way to do it. I might have to get you my girlfriend because she she is such <laughs> a picky eater. She's vegetarian. She's I'm trying to get her to kind of make that final final move, but she's such a picky eater. It's harder to get her to like to actually make a transition because it's I might I might have to get you with her because maybe maybe you can find something she'll actually eat. I think maybe that'll that that would actually solve. Well, what does she like to eat? Uh, mainly potatoes. Uh, <laughs> then that's great. Potatoes are fantastic. I, I can't get her to eat onions or bell peppers or, or spinach is okay in some cases. Mostly it has to be kind of like blended up into something. But okay. it's like, uh, So guess what I had for breakfast today? What's that? I made oil-free hash browns, which what's that? Potatoes. Okay, potatoes, fair enough. And I did put things she hates in it, but you don't have to. Right. Okay. I put... Bed pe- bell peppers, onions, right? You said she hates that. Yeah. Um, I also put shredded carrots. She loves carrots. And mushrooms. She doesn't like mushrooms. Right. So she, she, she like could do that. the carrots so, and potatoes. Then. <laughs> so she could just have it with carrots and potatoes. But you yeah. want to know what? If you've ever listened to Dr. McDougall and you read the starch solution, potatoes mixed with vegetables is what your body wants. Yeah. That's the glucose your body wants. People lose weight, get healthy yeah, on fair. potatoes. That's fair. So there you go. She loves potatoes. I could talk with her a thousand different ways. <laughs> Does she like potatoes with gravy? I don't know. I think I don't know if she's actually gravy or not. We haven't we haven't had the we haven't had the we haven't had the the gravy talk. So I don't know. <laughs> well, we have lots of vegan gravies too that okay. I could recommend. Um, does she like, um, does she like, um, shepherd's pie? Uh, no, because potatoes on top. No, because there's things in it that she would, that she wouldn't like. It's, it's uh, what, what the top, because it's, uh, it can get, it can get interesting and around dinner time. Yeah. A lot of times it's like you figure out yours. I'll figure out mine. Cause I don't have have much time to dig. Yeah. That, that sounds challenging, but when, so what it is, is that. If the person doesn't really believe that the animal products are hurting them, right. then they will not make the switch. There's no right. pain point there. They don't believe it. Right. If they don't believe it's hurting the animals and they're not emotionally moved by that, and if they don't believe that it's the biggest source of carbon emissions, water degradation, and pollution on this earth, if they don't believe any of those things, yeah. they will not make the switch. It's I was, just that simple. They have to believe well, I will say on what, an emotional level. What the health got her to – because when we first met, she was still doing like chicken every now and then. Yeah. And I was van- like trying to – come on, you got to stop. And when we found – I got her to watch what the health, and that got her to, to cut that out. So she's yeah, – yeah. So that's, it's, she, it's, it's educated. Is she – you are you guys? Well, how old are you guys? I'm 35 and she is 30. So you guys are young. You guys are still young. You got all <laughs> this time ahead. So yeah. sometimes young people. So so she's not moved by the the plight of the animals or anything like that. She is. It's 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 right now. It's just kind of get her. Get, it's getting her over the taste bud thing. I think she she. I would say she eats probably like 90 90 percent of what she eats is vegan already. Um, right. It's on on occasion she'll like if there's something like there'll be dairy in it or something like that. It's that's usually what happens. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 currently still very rare that it's, it's very rare that she does, but I'm just trying to get her that last little ten percent. Yeah. Get her, you know, she, she she's slowly getting there. She's she's opening her eyes, so which is good. Little little by little, but the documentaries really help. You could just 
keep putting on different documentaries. Oh yeah, yeah. That's and she likes documentaries. So I think that's working. Uh, so, is she is she also overweight or have any health problems? Uh, not 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 so much. There's there's uh, hormonal. Uh, she has some hormonal issues that are known, and I have to keep trying to tell her the yeah. dairy doesn't help with that because it adds more hormones, which she knows, and that's why she's cut a lot of it back. She's cut a lot of it back since we've started dating. So. Here's she's, an she's interesting book that might help, and it's called – have you heard of the medical medium books? I have not. There's there's one called Thyroid, and it's fantastic. Okay. I'm writing it down. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure everybody heard me type that out right now. And thyroid <laughs> has to do with hormone regulation sure. and dysregulation. So. Sure. There you go. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll check that out. What? So, yeah. um I, I think it's it's very interesting. You actually have that one on one building like the menus with with uh, with, yeah. with people. What, what what are the other steps that uh, you go through? So um, then you know we we got to clean out the kitchen and they have to learn to understand what products have animal foods in them. So we start cleaning out their kitchen and start learning how to read labels for the animal products, and they are floored when they find out how much processed food chemicals and animal products are really in their food in in the food that they thought was good that's in their kitchen so we we do the kitchen clean out then we go grocery shopping so i can teach them how to read the labels to make the best choices and so that a basic way to do that is first of all it has to have zero cholesterol because then it's not doesn't have any animal products in it Right? Mm-hmm. There's no cholesterol in plant foods. That's what I check first, yeah. Yeah. And the <laughs> second thing is the two F words, fat and fiber. Among all the choices of the pastas, for example, or the cereals, right? You want to look for the one with the least fat and the most fiber right. first. Then you could go to sugar, protein, other stuff. The two F words is you know, a way to make it easy yeah. among two different things. Um, I have a tiny video on my uh, Going Vegan for Health Facebook page about that. Um, and, you know, then we also have the big oil conversation at the same time because we're talking about fat, the F word. Um, most people eat way more oil than they think. Right. And oil is 120 uh, calories per tablespoon of pure fat. Mm-hmm. And it's not a whole food. So, um, you want me to give you that explanation of why it's not a whole food? Yeah, cause that's something that, that can, can I, I try to reduce my oil usage as much as yeah. I can. I do use a little from time to time, but it's extremely rare. But yeah, if you could kind of go into that, because that's something people don't really understand, because they thought coconut oil and olive oil and yeah, nature, all that stuff so is so, so good for you. Yeah, if you could. It's so confusing, and I actually have a tiny personal story that goes with that so that when I first went vegan, I didn't know about the oil thing and that forks over knives thing. I didn't know about the oil. And so I thought, oh, coconut oil and olive oil is vegan, so I can have that. And I started pouring it on everything. I was putting it in my smoothies. I was sauteing everything in olive oil. I was frying my veggie patties. I was living large on oil, and I was not losing weight. And um, then I saw Dr. Esselstyn's video, which is called No Oil. He literally (laughs) says it just like that. And he goes through the medical evidence of why no oil and why his reversing heart disease protocol includes no oil. But the the gist of it is it's, it's not a whole food because the whole food is the olive, the coconut, the avocado, or the walnut, right? Right. That you got the oil from. And the whole food includes the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, the fiber, and the fluids in that fruit or vegetable. Mm -hmm. So if you're stripping away just the fat and you're eating 120 calories per tablespoon of just the fat, and that fat causes damage to the endothelial cells on the inside of your arteries that you can't see, whether you're overweight or you're just right in your weight, you can't see that damage. Um, that is not what you want to be doing. You want to eat the whole foods because when you eat the actual olives, coconut, avocado, or walnuts, you're getting that fat along with the fiber, which slows down its absorption, which Mm -hmm. lets your body use it the way it wants to use it. When you just swill down the actual oil, your body doesn't know what to do with that. Right. So where does it. it go? Into your arteries. Yeah. And it causes high cholesterol. And that's what happened to me. 
my whole life, I had fine cholesterol. Even when I ate animal products, my cholesterol was 160. I started eating coconut oil, and all of a sudden, my cholesterol was 209. Mm. I was like, what the heck? So I stopped eating it immediately. My cholesterol went way right back down. Right. So that, to me, shows what it is. So I have another video on my um, Going Vegan for Health Facebook page where I talk about measuring the oil you put in the pan, measure the oil you're putting on your salad dressing. Cause when I measured it, it was about six tablespoons and that's 720 calories of pure fat. Whose diet can God. add 720 calories of pure, <laughs> pure fat, fat and not wow. gain weight? That's right. not a way to do it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Wow. It's okay. So yeah, I, I might have to throw my, I have coconut oil, coconut oil in the cat and I might have to toss that out when we're done. Yeah, I tossed it. I th there's only one thing I use it for, and that is my skin on top. Right. So yeah, my um, my, my my girlfriend when she was of all you know she was telling me about how like you know you they did a study that shows that coconut oil is not that great for you. I looked at her, looked at her and said, well, said, well, actually, no oil is good for you. So good. <laughs> Have that conversation again like, and look up Dr. Esselstyn's video. No, no oil. oil, and then yeah. you'll see. <laughs> the explanation that I just gave you that's really yeah. from him yeah and yeah and, and it's one of those it's one of those things that are like me I, I I know you're right and I shouldn't have that in my house and I should really uh reduce and using that and removing it yeah so once I learned that um and and now that I know how to teach it to other people I am 100 percent positive that when I help someone adopt a whole food plant-based diet with a goal of reducing blood pressure, cholesterol, or glucose levels and weight mm -hmm. that I know that I'm, it's going to be successful and that they're going to get those serious health benefits fast. Right. That's how you do it fast. You take out the oil and then I show them. So then the fourth part after, you know, of my program, after they, I've taken them shopping to read labels and learn the F words and that stuff, right. then I'll come home to their kitchen and we'll cook a couple of things that they want to learn how to cook. So if they want to learn how to saute without oil, or if they want to learn how to use the Instant Pot to make soups or beans, or if they want to learn how to make any special certain thing or like how to make a curry or whatever, I will do some cooking with them to teach them those basic skills. Do you, do you work with people who are, who are remote or aren't like right there with you, like if they're online? Or, yeah, yeah. Or we do the cooking through Zoom and okay. also in groups through Facebook Live. So we can do it either way like that. Okay. Yeah. Zoom is face to face. We oh. could even do it through Skype like this. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So imagine that I'm so on Zoom, you can have it side by side. Is there a way on Skype to do it side by side? Uh, yeah, I think you, you can you can split you can split the screen. There's like there's other there's like there's options to have how to how I view it, I believe. Um, I, yeah. I, I have I have you down I I have you I'm like down in the bottom right corner right now so you're all yeah. nice and big but yeah you can do split screens and stuff on Skype. And stuff. So what it would be is that like I would be the big one and they can see what I'm cooking and we'll be cooking it together. We'll make a plan to have the ingredients and cook it at the same time and I'll show them how to do it right. and they'll wow. they'll do it. So I do everything remote as well. So I have in my local town I have groups like weight loss groups and one on one coaching. And then in um, remotely, I do the same groups. I have a weight loss group online and also and, and they all have private Facebook groups so that people can, you know, yeah. totally talk about it 24 seven. Nice. And um, I do both remote and. Um, Very cool. Yeah. One on one. So, so um, I do have a free Facebook group for anybody who's going vegan for health. And, and that includes. Lots of vegans who want to adopt more whole plant foods. Right. So the, the group is filled with vegans also, which is great because the vegans who follow whole food plant-based diets help the new people go vegan also. And yeah. they also help vegans coming in wanting to make their diets healthier. And, and for those vegans to learn about the oil thing or the other thing. So, um, what's, what, and what, they, I'll say, which, uh, what, uh, what, what, what group is that? It's called Going Vegan for Health with Vegan Coach Naomi, and it's linked on my Facebook page called Going Vegan for Health. Okay. And there's a link to that page from my website, which is also Going Vegan for Health. I see. I see a trend. <laughs> I see a trend happening. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good branding. And and I have an Instagram also, which is Vegan Coach Naomi. Okay. 
Of yeah. course, I'll, I'll I'll put all this like when we release the ep- we release this episode and on Facebook. Yeah. Everything, I'll put all the links out there. Everything will be in the show notes so everyone can get it and yeah, definitely yeah. so we can spread it out there and get everybody jump on board. Yeah. So the Facebook group is one of the most fun things, but um, the great thing about it is that people who are searching online about going vegan for a health reason, because most of, most of the people find me because they watch what the health and then they start Googling. Right. Right. So, um, that's, that's the greatest thing is that those people are, are motivated to make changes and almost every single day, which is the greatest part of this group, somebody in the group will post about how their life has changed for the better since they went vegan a month ago or six months ago or a year ago or what, they'll tell some kind of success story and then everybody else hops on to that success story to tell their success story. Yeah. And that is just the, the greatest thing that happens in that group because oh, yeah. people are turning their shit around. They are yeah. taking control. They're voting with their dollars. They're changing the world. Every single person who goes vegan for their health stops eating animals. Absolutely. Well, so I mean, the- even though I'm an ethical vegan – So I went vegan for my health, right? I was one of those health vegans. And then I learned about the animals and I learned about the environment. And those two things became so important to me. I don't care why somebody goes vegan as long as they stop hurting and eating animals. Right, exactly. That's That's the people all the time, yeah. I mean, it was like people always could say, like, why'd you go? Why'd you go? I was like, what does it matter why somebody made the transition? Just make the stupid transition. (laughs) Every person who goes vegan for their health stops eating animals and has the capacity to learn more about not using any animal products, including leather, including beauty, beauty products tested on animals, including, you know, all of it. So yeah. but people, people ask like, is it hard? Like, like, you know, what's the hardest part? Like, it's not really that hard. It's like, once you realize that the products in the, the products, but the, the, the animals aren't here for you. Once you learn that that's, they're not here for you, then yeah. it's not hard. Cause then it's nothing that you need to begin with. Also, once you feel the tiniest bit of benefit from it and the tiniest bit more aligned with your personal values, then it like clicks and you're like, oh my God, this is who I always wanted to be. (laughs) Yeah. I always wanted to be somebody who was very concerned with doing everything I could for the environment. And in fact, when, um, you know, I'm 20 years older than you, so I'm 50. You said you were 30. I'm 35. 35. So I'm 50. So, okay. I can't do the math, but I'm older than you. 15 years. And 15 years. So back in the eighties is when they first came, came with recycling bins. And I was a teenager and I, I was a young teenager and I asked my mom and dad, if I could be in charge of the recycling bins. Right. And I've always been that way. So when I watched Cowspiracy and I found out that going vegan is the number one best way that you could help the environment. I was like, heck yes, I'm already doing it. Yay. (laughs) So like once, you know, you, you come more aligned with your values, it's no longer hard. It's what you always wanted to do. It's what you always were meant to be. Yeah. That's then it's not hard. It's what you want. And once you learn how to make that food delicious, there's no stopping it. The people, it's just a cascade of wonderful. And I've seen it just over and over in my group. If you uh, request to join the group today, you can see some posts from yesterday oh. that um, are exactly about that. It's oh, yeah. amazing. That, yeah. And so, um, yeah, we're, 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 we're definitely getting uh, past like the hour. I know that we, uh, we, yeah, we're we do. done. Yeah. So no, that's fine. I just, uh, and uh, as, I want people, that's what people do want people to know where they can find you, where they can, you know, mm-hmm. get in contact uh, and especially jo- join up with your groups and start making that transition. Where can they, yeah. where can they do that? Facebook. Okay, so my website is www.goingveganforhealth.com, okay. and there are links to my social media. There's a free cheat sheet. You can find free recipes, um, and also I write the success stories of my clients and some people in my group so that you can read some of those success stories, and all of my services and programs are listed there as well. And then on Facebook is where you can find... Um, all of my short videos, you can find my group going vegan for health. Everything is linked from that one business page called going vegan for health. And, um, 
you can also, anybody can message me from there. I'm really responsive because I work with clients online all the time. I'm really responsive um, via Facebook Messenger. People just message me. They ask me a question while they're in the store and I can answer that question and that keeps that person's knowledge up and so that they don't buy an animal product because they didn't know. Right. You know what I mean? Which is the hardest, which is the hardest thing. Yeah. You always get home and you yeah. go, what? That's my... Why is that made from hair? There's like so many little vitamins that are made from like lanolin and like hair. It's make like it's the most ridiculous thing. And so I, I'll have I definitely I want to I'll put up your your website and things so people can find you a lot easier on yeah. uh, on our Facebook page and our Instagram mm-hmm. and things like that so we can find you a lot easier um, yeah. as well as a show note. So you know, anyone 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 listening, go to you know go to the website. Definitely have everything there for you on Nemo's website, uh, goingveganforhealth.com. Yes. And uh, I'll have all the links on mine as well so they can everybody can just kind of flood right in and start start you know, getting healthier. <laughs> yeah, anybody anybody can join that free Facebook group because that's for everybody who's interested in going vegan for a health reason. Right. That's and, and any vegans at all who are interested in also health. So um, you know, I will constantly correct people who are trying to eat gardein. And trying to use a bunch of oil, if they're posting about that, I don't want that in my group. It's it's right. a going vegan for health group. Right. So, so I constantly correct. <laughs> and, and that's the thing I have to make. I do that. I'll literally go to the garden aisle. I'm like, uh, uh, nope, nope, nope. I know better. I know better. I know better. Yeah. And, every, yeah. and anyone listening should automatically just join your group because everyone listening to this show should automatically yeah. be someone interested in health. So you should just have like people coming in like, like crazy right now. And of course, <laughs> um, and of course... I have the, the, for the vegans who, um, really need help going, you know, um, adopting a healthier vegan diet, a whole food plant-based diet. My program is like half the price for vegans. Right, I call it like me. the vegan health tune up. Right. That's definitely <laughs> me for sure. <laughs> yeah. Cause they already, they already know how to be vegan. They just have some misconceptions about right. the food. Right. And, and they that's... also have to watch those documentaries over again before I will help them. That's fair. <laughs> I need to. I need. I need. I need. I, need, I, need, I think. I think. I think. Even I need a uh, six years in. I think I still need a a a a, 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 a re up course to kind of put myself back into perspective. Well, you know what? I've watched those documentaries six and seven times because I show them at screenings, and um, you can learn something new every single oh, time. Sure. And if you take the time to watch every single vegan documentary that there is, you will give yourself reasons every time you watch one to stick with what it is that you want. Right. It's just uh, ammunition for the change. Right. It's, so it, it, it's I'm all about reminder. watching all those documentaries. For sure, yeah. And, and, and they're, they're, I, I've watched What the Health a couple of times, I broke over knives a couple of times, just to kind of like, it's always good to have a reminder of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and probably, yes. as you said, things you've missed that you kind of need to realign yourself back into. Yeah. Plant yeah. Pure Nation is another great one. Yeah, that's really Fantastic. good. Fantastic. I haven't seen that one in a while. That's a good about that yeah. one. All right. I, I have a whole list I have to go watch now. Yep, as everyone else it. listening does, needs to jump on it. Uh, yep. Well, Naomi, thanks for thanks for coming on. Of course, you and I could probably talk about this stuff for another like three or four hours. But sure, uh, anytime, for, anytime. Yeah, thanks for coming on. You and I have talked about other topics. If you, I would love to have you back on to dive sure. into other things, there are things we talked about today. I'm sure we can talk even deeper on. So I definitely want to have you back on if you if you'd like to. to kind of go deeper and deeper into these things. Sure thing. You any any kind of topics that you want to delve further into, you just let me know what they are. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be, we'll be in, in fact, if you stay on, we'll chat a little bit. Maybe we can figure some stuff out to go on, uh, go on, but stay on with me. But for this okay. episode, thank you for, uh, thank you for being on and, uh, I highly appreciate it. And I know everyone's going to, going to be jumping in and loving this as well. So thank you. All right. Gratefully vegan. It's-